So yeah. welcome to the next edition of the Rare Business Podcast. With me today, I have Ed Ariel, who is VP of Customer Service at Easy Cater. Hi, Ed. How are you doing? Doing good. Very well. So first of all, Ed, welcome to the to the podcast kind of series. But for the benefit of our listeners and readers, can you tell us a little bit about you and a bit about the work that you do? Sure. So um, I work at Easy Cater. Um, I'll tell you just a quick little few words about Easy Cater. Easy Cater is the only nationwide marketplace for business catering. Uh, we do um, we feed locations all over the United States. Um, it's a free service which people like, mm-hmm. um, and really it's for feeding, uh, training, business meetings. A lot of people, a lot of companies that uh, use food as a perk will order through us. Uh, myself personally, I came to Easy Cater about three years ago. Um, I have a, a pretty diverse background. I've worked in financial services, um, technology operations, um, a lot on the service operations side. And uh, when I came to Easy Cater, it was a very small company. I think there was about 30 employees. Mm-hmm. And um, I was I was intrigued um, with the ability to use my experience like all my experience to come here and really grow the customer service operation side as well as grow the entire company. Fantastic. Now, I mean, you just touched on something that, that we were talking about before, and this is kind of the real subject of what we were, what we wanted to talk about today is because we were talking offline and you were telling me a lot more about how much you've grown sort of the team and how you've, in doing so, how you've preserved or set and preserved kind of your customer service standards. I mean, but first of all, can you tell us like when you talk about how fast you've grown? I mean, how fast have you grown in the short period of time that you've been where been there? Just so we can get a, if you like, quantum on the sort of challenge that you've that you've gone through in the last couple of years. Sure. So um, when I started here, the customer service department was about ten or eleven people, um, and. Um, and the company was about 30. Now, uh, customer service is about, um, we had 10 new people start today, so I think we're about 120 people now. Um, uh, and the company as a whole is 230 people. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's grown dramatically. Uh, our, our book, our, our order volume over that time has grown 10 times. So right. our philosophy right. is to, uh, you know, obviously grow the headcount, both in customer service and company wide, at a slower rate, so that we're more profitable. Okay. But um, but yeah. So to touch on the quality part, like we've been, you know, from from the beginning, our philosophy has been to be insanely helpful for our customers to make the customers' lives easier. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so what we do is we we spend a tremendous amount of time hiring people. Uh, we probably in in the Boston area to to hire somebody. Uh, the estimated cost is uh, about eight thousand dollars. We know we spend more than that, but it's important to us to find like those A level, the right people that will um, understand our philosophy, incorporate that into how they work, and uh, convey that to the customers. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, but they, I mean, you've gone from what sort of ten to over a hundred employees in the space of what two, just over two years. I mean, uh, three years, three yeah, years, about three years. Um, yeah. I mean, how is it, is it all about the people? Is it that, is it by hiring, spending the right sort of time to hire the right sort of people? Is that how you've maintained the service standards or is it, have you done, is there some secret sauce that you're not telling me about? <laughs> the, uh, the main, the main, I mean, we do have some stuff that we do, uh, after the people are hired that's unique to Easy Cater, but the main difference uh, between us and most of the other companies I've worked with or interacted with since I've been here is the people. Right. We, I know, I know a lot of companies say we only hire the best of the best or we only hire the top 10% or we hire A players. Mm-hmm. Easy Cater lives by that motto and not just for customer service, for, for every department. Right. Uh, so when we're interviewing people, we spend a lot of time, you know, we want to make sure that they, they have a customer focus, but also that they've done something else in their lives and it doesn't even have to be work related that they've been passionate about that mm-hmm. they've been really, you know, it's, it's what makes them happy. And then we see, you know, maybe they're, I don't know, it could be anything. Maybe they're, they love 
surfing. So right. or, or, or travel. Travel's a big one. Everyone likes to travel, and people are like, my passion is travel. And we're like, well, what excites you about that? And then we see if we can um, get that kind of passion out of them at work. Right. And and we do a lot of uh, a screening. So for an entry level customer service person here at Easy Cater, you'll go through um, a pretty rigorous uh, screening process, phone interviews. We we screen out a lot of people in the phone process. I wouldn't you know. People are confused sometimes uh, right. that they're not not moving along because they have you know five years of telecom experience. Right. But uh, but but most of the yeah. So so it's um you know once we find the people with the passion, then then the, the other main thing we look for is the culture, right? That they're going to be a culture fit. Uh, mm-hmm. You know the min- the number one thing we hire for, and again, a lot of companies say this is culture, but Everybody here, so all of the 200 plus people that are here are very friendly with each other. There's nobody that you couldn't walk up to and ask a question. There's nobody that I like to say you couldn't go to a Red Sox game with and spend three hours with and feel very comfortable and have a good time. Right. And, and then when we were talking before, the I mean, you mentioned as part of all that, you mentioned there was a phrase that you used which was called psychological safety. And that's how you use that in your hiring. I mean, that that was intriguing. So I, I wonder if you could explain to me what that is and kind of how you use it. Sure. So, so once we once we've identified people as candidates and and they start, we we start we've kind of taken this plot this this idea of psychological safety, and we've made it easy caters. We've we've adopted it and, and changed it around a little. But we start from day one. Well, let me tell you, like the reason we started. Uh, even trying psychological safety was because it would take five or six months for a customer service person to to uh, to understand what we were trying to do, to understand the philosophy, to get the culture. Right. Um, and it was it was too long, right? Uh, so we we were trying to we were trying to shorten the window. So what we came up with was this idea of psychological safety, where starting on day one, we're telling them our philosophies. Uh, we're telling them. You know, everything has to be about making the customer's life easier. Um, you know, we throw them a lot of curveballs right off the bat. Uh, right. So we say things like, we say things like, um, you know, if customers never talk to us, that might be the best thing because that means uh, the systems we put in place to make their life easier are all working perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, we explain that the way to be a successful ninja, which is what we call our customer service people, right. is, um is to continuously be looking for operational improvement. So, you know, we, we're very honest. We're like, hey, you can come in and be an A-level ninja and and um, just do a great job, help the customers. But if you want to take advantage of the opportunities here at Easy Cater for advancement, uh, recognition, uh, what we want you to do is look at what you're doing all day, every day. Is there something that could be done better? And then we go into the fact, you know, some of the unusual stuff that we we don't we don't do any reviews. There's no annual reviews, semi-annual reviews. Right. Uh, what we do, we have a lot more open communication between the supervisors, the managers, and the staff. And then the question that always comes up, uh, if we've hired the right people, is well, if I don't get a review, when do I get my raise? <laughs> yes. Um, and that's when we explain to them, and you should see their faces on day one or two that. You can get a raise whenever you want. Whenever you feel like you've outperformed your salary, uh, come to us and tell us why, and we will then either explain to you why you're a little off, right? Or we'll say you're close. Uh, here's some things you can work on, and we'll discuss it in three months. Or in some cases, we give people raises, and we've given people two or three raises a year if they are truly outperforming their salary. So, but the psychological safety aspect is we we give all of them that day one. I give it to them. Mm-hmm. And then we reinforce it through different uh, means over the next six weeks. So we have a separate meeting with the supervisors uh, in-house, and then the supervisors take them outside of the office for like a, a fun event. Uh, and the whole purpose of these is to make them feel comfortable, reinforce the message. Uh, myself and the director of customer service take them on like, we have like a snack outing where We'll go to some of our, have food brought in from some of our catering partners and uh, just have like a two hour, how are things going? Do you have any questions? And that's when they really start to come out of the closet about like, you know, how am I evaluated? How do I ask for more money? How do I succeed? How, how long do I have to stay in my position? Mm-hmm. 
and and then at the very end of the six weeks, you know, we keep reinforcing the message. Then I take them to a lunch usually, and that's when we uh, that's where we we gauge the results. Like uh, we know that at the end of six weeks, say a year, year and a half ago, people still weren't one hundred percent bought in, but now we can see that. They already have ideas. They right. already are very open with their feedback about training. Hey, it would be, I think I would have got this better if you did this. Where, um, which is what you have to do to be successful. And and the, all that kind of fits into your kind of standards, right? Because it's actually you know um, a lot of times when people think about kind of customer service standards, they kind of talk about ah oh, we need to kind of answer the phone within three rings and so on and so forth. But actually, that's sort of not really how you look at standards. You're looking at standards in a different way and and that's what that what you were just talking about then is all part of it right that's right we don't use traditional kpis for the call center we don't look at uh average handle time uh time on hold you know calls taken uh, emails taken what we really focus on 90 percent of it is quality so we have a quality team of four people that is constantly listening to listening to calls reviewing emails reviewing chats yeah, and um, and the other part of it is the um, is you know the the interactions, the the feedback that you're giving us, how you're getting along with your team. Yeah, um, and and we do have, I mean, we do have a very very high level. Once a week, we put out we call it we count like interactions. So, but we have an incredibly low standard on that, and that's really we don't use that to evaluate them. We use that we give that information to them. Uh, we share it with all hundred plus ninjas to kind of so they can see how they're doing against their fellow ninjas. But when it comes to um, evaluating people for promotions, raises, things like that, what we're looking at really is the quality score and uh, their ability to uh, identify possibilities for improvements in the department. Okay. Or in the company. The company, a lot of the ninjas will look at things outside of the department and make recommendations okay. um, and uh, and that's and we have such a good culture that the other departments don't look at it as like you're stepping on my toes they look at it as well you're the one talking to the customers so let's see if there's something we can get to work okay and do, are you all the you know the the all your ninjas are they all in the one place they are not so we have um, our headquarters is here in Boston uh -huh. uh, so we have we probably about have about half of our ninjas here right now, and then we use outsourced centers. But just like everything else with Easy Cater, it's an unusual relationship with the outsourced centers. So we have um, ninjas in three outsourced centers. We we work very closely when we bring on an outsourcer because we are we're looking for like the A level employees again. Yeah. We we're very very involved in the interview process, you know, and and one of the criteria we look for when we hire an outsourcer is somebody that's comfortable with our level of involvement. Yes. Because you know we uh, we have a we have a high rate of people that don't make it through our process hiring yeah. process here in Boston. Mm -hmm. Whenever we bring on a new outsourcer, the rate is even higher there, and it frustrates some of them, but. Um, it's sort of like the psychological safety of a new partner. They have to understand what we're trying to do, and it takes them takes them a little while. But but we have the same quality standards, uh, the same stats. When I said we send out the stats once a week, we send that to the outsourced partners too. Everybody can see what everybody's doing, and um, our QA team uh, works with their QA team, and uh, we we um, we make sure that we're, we're staying to the same criteria and then we evaluate all four groups against each other on a weekly on a monthly basis so okay um, yeah. so, so just for just for clarity I mean so can you just explain simply when you talk about your customer service standards we know that that when there's a there's a there's a there's a handful of elements in there can you just kind of list them out for me in terms of kind of what are the different elements just to kind of just to actually highlight how different your approach is to many others sure so you know we have we have um the standards that most people have you know uh are you greeting the for, well we have no scripts so right. are you saying a greeting uh you know that has the company name and your name in it offering assistance yeah uh we also have the closing you know thank you is there anything else i can help you with recapping but those are very small portions of it mm -hmm. the majority of it is um you know documenting what happened on the account yeah. and 
did you did you resolve the customer's issue? So, um, and it, and that's that's the meat of it because did you resolve it in a way that uh, made the customer's life easier, made the customer um, save them time, uh, yeah. and that's that's the vast majority of it. So, I'll give you a, a very quick example. You know, if a customer calls in and says, um, you know, I have a vegetarian, I try to put a vegetarian on there, instead of uh, putting the customer on hold, calling the caterer. Uh, the caterer says, yeah, we have three vegetarian dishes going back to the customer. Which one of these three do you want? Uh, we try to cut out the middleman altogether. We have a very close relationship with our catering partners. Um, we, right off the bat, will know for the majority of them, like, what what options they have, like, um, how specific. You know, some people are like, I'm a vegetarian, but I'll eat chicken, I'll eat fish. Um, and... So if we can do that, that's great. So we could say, hey, we know this caterer. These are their options. Which one would you like? It's all set. We'll, we'll email you if there's an issue. If not, you'll get a confirmation. Or if we don't know the caterer they pick, maybe it's a new caterer, we'll, we'll give the customer some options. Like, you want me to put you on hold? I'll take care of this. This is kind of what I'm thinking. But what we don't want is like the back and forth with the customer two or three times. Well, talk to the caterer, talk to the customer. So in some call centers I've worked in before, that's fine. At the end of the call, it's resolved either way. The way we want to do it is anticipating the customer's needs, saving them time, and uh, you know making their life easier. Right. Okay. And but the also the other thing you were talking about before is that you know which I think is interesting and something I've been exploring with different sort of people in the last sort of few months and things is you talk when we were talking before you were talking a lot about how you spend a lot of time hiring the right people, finding the right people. And, and 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 bring them into the your kind of culture, and then you also talk about this idea of the continuous improvement and empowerment and doing the right thing and and making focus on making the the customer's life easier. So you talk about empowerment, and and, and many other companies do as well. But the thing I've been finding is that that whilst there's a lot of companies that talk about empowerment, um, many of them don't achieve it because many of the people don't don't know what it is to be empowered so i guess my question to you guys would be is how do you get people comfortable with that idea of what it is to be empowered i mean because it seems to me it's almost a bit like you can't just throw open the doors and go do what you want because sometimes yeah. people have got to figure out where the where the kind of the guidelines are or where the edges are if you know what i mean yeah exactly so the empowerment is is one of the the main the main piece of the feedback we get at the end of training is, you know, these people may have had multiple other jobs at the, at the outsource centers in here, and every company says, you're empowered to make decisions, make the customer's life better, don't argue over the nickel, things like that. Yeah. And um, but by the time they get through their training, they realize that, you know, we really mean it. Yes. Um, and I can tell you, it, it goes through, um, so they, have, they spend about three weeks in the classroom, and then for the rest of the three weeks of training, they're sitting in um, some breakout rooms we have here, and they're either listening to someone take a call, listening to one of the people they're trained with take a call, or they're taking calls and someone's listening to them, and we're reinforcing the idea over and over again. And we, so how much can they give away is, is a common question. So if, there, if there's an issue with an order, uh, again, in a typical call center, it might be call the caterer, see what happened, have the caterer offer something, what we try to do is, is the customer called us and said there was an issue. It was, a, it was an hour late. We figure out what will make that customer happy. Um, we give that to the customer. The customer is done. Yeah. Right? The customer is out of it. And then we work with the caterer and figure out, um, you know, what the caterer can give. And, and what we want is we want good partners from the customer and the caterer. And most of the time, we're giving the caterers such substantial volume. They'll, they'll work with us on these. Sometimes we do lose a little money, and uh, but but we're making the customer happy, right? So, but the empowerment is we have we have many stories of uh, of, of uh, brand new ninjas that made a decision on an account. So when they come out of training, they're given they can credit any amount. They can do a whole order. They can do a future order. We give them empowerment to do everything. They just need to justify it. We have stories of ninjas that made mistakes. You know that would cost the company say six hundred dollars roughly, right. and that new ninja was very confident they were going to lose their job, <laughs> right. and we didn't. 
we explained uh, what had happened in the issue, how she, 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 she was going over the top being insanely helpful. In this case, I'm talking about the customer actually took a little bit of an advantage of her. Right. Um, and then the customer was like, I want a free order. And she gave, we ended up giving it to her. The fact that we didn't fire the ninja and we just explained to it, like that ninja's now been promoted a couple of times. And not only that, but the other ninjas that heard the story are like, oh my God, they are serious. You know, they do empower us. And if we make a mistake, as long as we don't make the same mistake repeatedly, yeah, um, it's uh, it's not an issue. And with regards to like the adjustments, like this is a, again a, a philosophy of ours is right. So we, our QA team looks at the amounts that are adjusted, but we're not looking at every order. So as a company, our philosophy is how much is being adjusted across the board. Right? Yeah. So compared to our total bookings, what are we adjusting? And we watch that fluctuation. We don't watch each individual ninja or each supervisor team because um, one month could be higher just randomly, but if the percentage overall of bookings stays the same, which is well below the industry average for a service uh, organization, um, we, we don't see the value in uh, building reports, processes, procedures for getting into the minutiae when the overall philosophy is in place. Okay. And so this all sounds kind of great. I mean, with, within you and your... Um in and head office and your outsource kind of uh, partners and things but like you guys work across a massive kind of value chain um i mean how do you maintain i mean so you've got high quality there but how can you kind of maintain the high quality across the kind of the value chain because you're not really responsible for all of it are you no i mean technically we're not responsible for um you know the quality of the food or the timeliness of it being delivered or um or uh, the, uh, the interactions the delivery person has with the customer, for example. But what we do is uh, every time an order, every time a, a customer places an order, so there's, EasyCater has a, a rewards program. So again, right. the service is free, but we, we also give them rewards on top of that for using our service. Mm -hmm. um, one, of the, one of the very small rewards that our customers love is we give them 100 points, which is equivalent to a dollar, yeah. Um, for evaluating each order. Okay. So every order they get, and they can evaluate it right away, they can do it when they do their next order, but almost uh, a vast majority of them do the, do the reviews. And then we use those reviews to, um, to rank the caterers on the website. So if you have all great reviews, you move up the website, and you know, the people on the, in the, at the top of the search rankings get the most orders. If you have negative reviews, you move down, or if you're late, even if you have no reviews and you're late, it will move you down the website. Uh -huh. um, customer, customers want their orders accepted quickly so they know they don't have to worry about it. So if you accept orders quickly, you move up the website. If you accept them slowly, you move down. So in theory, what we tell people is um, all the partners on there are good partners of ours. Um, you know, if you're not a good partner, we, we will take you down. We'll take you off the website. But they're all good partners, but the ones at the top are, you know, the most reliable right. time, you know, at least in all the performance issues. So we use that. Okay. And we have another department that works for me outside of customer service that does um, service for the catering partners. And we work very closely with them to explain, like, what's going to help their score, um, how to get them more orders, and... Basically, a lot of the services we offer there are, again, free. Accept your orders quicker, make sure they're on time, you move up in the rankings, you'll get more orders. Okay. Um, that's kind of brilliant. I mean, so I have, I have a couple of questions that, that, um, that I wanted to ask. Is like, what, um, one, why ninjas? I mean, apart from the obvious, because I think everybody in the wildest dreams would want to be called a ninja at some point in their life. <laughs> but why, but um, why ninjas? Yeah, the ninja name was actually created before I started here by um, the woman that ran customer service before me, who's, who's still in the company. Um, and her, her thinking was, again, like working be behind the scenes, stealthy, so that the, the customers aren't seeing it, but it's taking care of issues for them. Uh, very efficient. Right. Rumble will really do anything. Okay. No, I just, I like it. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm pretty sure that your people probably kind of wear that badge, kind of like, or that name with, with, with some pride, actually. It's like who would yeah, who would who wouldn't want to be called a ninja, yeah. um, and so um. But also the the other thing I wanted to say was that you you talked about the um, uh, the member of your team that that gave away or actually gave somebody a, a free order worth about six hundred dollars. I mean, uh, do you have a, a couple of other sort of stories of things that 
that some of your team have done when they've gone kind of above and beyond? Because I guess that's the product of the culture, the hiring and the culture that you've that, that you've created kind of here. I mean, it's and that's kind of what it means for the customer. Yeah, so so the issue is with catering. So people, if people have ordered catering for their office, yeah. um, there's the issue. There's two big things that um, take the amount of, most amount of time. You know, there there's always a percentage of orders you call up, you know, yourself to the cater, the food shows up. But if you have to, um, if you forgot or there's a last minute um, order, uh, and you try to call a caterer, a lot of them have cutoffs or. Um, or you know they just they, they can't make the food, uh, yeah. so so we we become like a resource for a lot of these uh, companies that they they've used us enough they know that if they call us even if it's two hours before yes you know we'll find we'll find something for you because I mean we have such a good relationship with the caterers the caterers want us to keep sending them orders um, and and again so. Imagine you're making a catering order and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to have to call five people and uh, hopefully one of them can do something. I don't want to order pizza. Yeah. And we end up giving you, you know, uh, Thai food that everybody in the office loves. And, and what, it, what our philosophy is like, we're, you know, the people that are doing the ordering, the, their office loves them, right? So we have an award like Office Hero right. um, that for our orders. And that's, 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 if you read our reviews on Trustpilot, there's a lot of reviews that say that, like you've saved, you know, you saved my, um, my reputation in the office. This is a last minute order. I forgot an order. Um, and, and we also have a number of, uh, power users that, uh, that use us almost exclusively. And cause we have a, a little breakout group of ninjas, we call right. them white glove ninjas. So, so super ninjas that, uh, that, Customers have, it's not even a product that we offer on our website, but we just started uh, doing this for customers where they will just send in at the beginning of the week, you know, here's 50 orders for the week because they're traveling around or they have teams that are traveling around and we will enter all of their orders for them. Uh, And we've gotten to know those customers so well that we'll even say, uh, you know, wait a second, wasn't there a person in Kentucky who had an allergy to avocados and they're like yep you're right the avocado one and the reason the salespeople, people these are mostly traveling sales people um pharma reps uh things like that they uh we surveyed them years ago and using our service they told us uh that they actually close on average five more orders a month um because of the time saving so they're making a lot more calls they're closing five more because they're not handling the food uh ordering of the food right wow okay so um ed here's a here's a question for you if i was to say to you so somebody's listening in and thinking wow you've gone from you know a staff of just over sort of 10 to over 100 in the space of kind of three years which is some phenomenal growth and you've done it by actually not fast hiring, but actually hiring right and taking your time and building, you know, getting the right people and building the right sort of culture so you can deliver that sort of outstanding sort of service and your, you know, your trust pilot scores and everything else and your growth sort of um, is testimony to that. But if there's somebody's listening to this and thinking, yeah, I want to do that. I want to replicate that myself. I mean, what advice would you give them? Uh, Where should they start? What should they do first? based on kind of what you've learned over the last kind of few years. Right. So, so I've had this conversation with a number of people in the industry as I've uh, traveled around and talked about Easy Cater. Um, you know, it, it sounds simplistic, but, you know, they have to, you know, I've, I've worked with companies that have, you know, not as great a culture to say, to put it kindly, that, um, that treat customer service as sort of like a necessary cost center evil. Yeah. And, the main thing I tell them is, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to start hiring. Well, it's important to get buy-in from your leadership team. We all know that 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 they acknowledge customer service is critical. But even if you don't have that, if your leadership is, you know, uh, not from the service side, um, you can still hire the right people, mm-hmm. um, instill that philosophy in your group, right? And and you know what I tell them is like we we spend a, a tremendous amount of time we spend more than the average time hiring we spend more than the average time training we pay just slightly above the market um, mm-hmm. but not substantially above 
And and one of the key things is, so if you do that, you also need to, and this sounds a little rough, but we do it here, is you have to kind of, you know, when, we, when you say you only hire A players, you should only hire A players. And if somebody is hired as an A and becomes a B, um, you have to spend the time either getting them back up to an A or getting rid of them. Uh, right. And I can't tell you, I can't tell you the number of companies I've talked to that have been around longer than Easy Cater. When you say, um, you know, do you, you know, what do you, what do you do with the people that, you know, kind of lose enthusiasm and they hide them, they, they keep them in the group, they give them stuff that doesn't impact the customer. Um, and, and, uh, you know, my philosophy on that or my, my recommendation to them is always to, uh, you know, either, either, you know, ideally you're going to get that person back up, mm-hmm. but if you can't, you're doing a disservice to all the other A players that you hired and to your company by keeping that person there. And I think that's really the difference here. So we, you know, we want to hire all A players. We want them all to be very successful. Um, again, with another baseball analogy. So our hiring, hiring philosophy is, um, you know, we don't swing for singles all day, even though you probably have a higher average because then you're just going to end up with a bunch of average, an average team after a few years. Mm-hmm. We swing for home runs. We look for the best hitters. Now, you might strike out more often, but if you do the right thing and realize your mistake and move on, then you're going to end up with a much better team. Fantastic. Um, and so um, I'm just conscious of time, Ed, and uh, just want to ask you, Quickly, it's like, you know, before I ask you my last couple of questions I always ask, is, that, is there anything that you think that we've missed out, we haven't covered, that's kind of relevant or salient to this, you know, the conversation around how you build such a high-performing sort of team, you know, in this kind of culture? I mean, is there any kind of lessons that you've learned that you'd like to share with us that we haven't really kind of covered? Um, one thing we didn't touch on was uh, how we retain our employees. Okay. Um, so when we find our best employees here at Easy Cater, um, you know, we, we're, we're very lucky. We're, we're growing rapidly. Uh, so there's naturally opportunities for advancement. But even when you hire all A-level players, not everybody can move up. So sure. we spend um, a lot of time. Like we have a supervisor, one of the supervisors, that it's primarily their focus is, you know, how do we retain, how do we keep the ninjas interested and we do things like, uh, so we have, we have a monthly contest. Um, and some of it is acceptance rate, but, right. which isn't that fun. Mm-hmm. But the next month we'll do something like, uh, uh, on what day will we have the most orders this month? And it's just a fun guessing game. It gets them looking at the metrics that we track on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. It gets them all you know, interacting with each other. Um, so we do something that's fun that has like a, a bigger business goal, and it doesn't always have to be like a ninja focus. Sometimes we say, "What day will our, will our sales team sell the most?" Right. So they go into the sales metrics and you know, kind of see where those are. Um, we also do quarter. You know, the, the supervisor arranges like quarterly outings, um, very inclusive. So we actually like send it out to the ninjas and we say, "What do you want to do?" And whatever wins, we do. And you'd be surprised the amount of people that will show up on a Saturday. Right. And to bowl, uh, but they, they enjoy each other's company. And when we do something here in Boston, we also do it for the outsourcers. So um, the easiest example is, so it seems like every December a Star Wars movie comes out. So one day the Boston Ninjas will go see the movie, the next day the El Paso Ninjas will go, the next day the Vegas Ninjas will go, and they'll all get to see the movie and we'll buy them popcorn and they get to spend time together outside the office. Cool. That's, that's that's great. I mean, it's yeah. No, it's it's one of the biggest challenges within, within services. How do you keep people? Um, because once you get good people, they're you know they are they are valuable. Um, so, Ed. Um, so that brings me to my last couple of questions, and and I the first one is a bit of a selfish one. That it's my my own piece of market research, if you if you like, um, because it's based on. Uh, the idea that I wrote a book last year called How to Wow, and what I've been doing ever since then, uh, on, at the end of these these interviews, is asking people for their own perspective on what wow service or wow experience means to them. So I'd be really interested to get your take on that. Sure. So our our belief at Easy Cater is that the customers, not that they don't want to be wowed, what they want is they want to have I don't want to spend as little time possible on this function. So what we found is they're most um, impressed and find our service most valuable when 
when the order goes um, straight through with very little customer interaction. So what, what we kind of say is, you know, we have great technology um, that's run by helpful people, mm-hmm. insanely helpful people. So if, if the technology is working, that's when the customer is the happiest, when there's some sort of uh, interaction. So the customer changes their order or a last minute order or something like that. That's when we want to be um, offered a wow service. But even then, uh, we believe in developing like a five second relationship with the customer, but we don't think the customer wants us to be spending, you know, turn a five minute call into a six minute call even just because um, we're trying to wow them. Again, sure. the ultimate goal is to be as efficient as possible, save them the time, you know, make them the office hero kind of thing. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And that brings me to my final question that I always ask at the end of these interviews. And the question is this, Ed. Is there anything that you would like to shamelessly plug? Um, sure, I'd like to I'd like to shamelessly plug Easycater. Um, for anybody that's listening, you know, if you're ordering food for trainings, meetings, um, as a perk to the people in your office, you should try Easycater. Uh, people who try it love it. They're they're amazed by how easy it is, how much time it saves them, and it makes everybody's lives easier and better. And that's ezcater.com, is that right? Yep, easy, letter E, letter Z, cater.com. Yep. Fantastic. Ed, I just wanted to say, um, first of all, congratulations on the the success and sort of building such a fabulous team, which is driving a lot of um, Easy Cater's kind of growth and, and, you know, then all the trust pilot scores and so on and so forth, probably having quite a lot of fun along the way but just finally just wanted to say thank you for sharing your time and insight and 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 your story with us today that's been great it's been great i appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and your listeners